Hi everyone, it's William Brawley with Imaging Resource. We're here in New York City today uh, taking a look at two new Sony lenses, a 600mm f4 G Master lens and a 200 to 600 f5.6 to 6.3 G lens. Now, the 600 f4, that follows along the 400 millimeter f2.8 lens that they released last year. Uh, this lens keeps a similar build quality, overall design, similar performance in terms of balance, and matches the overall look and style of the 400 millimeter 2.8. It has a full mag alloy body. It has uh, dust and moisture resistance. There is even rubber gasket around the lens mount. Uh, it uses a similar focusing motor to the 400 f2.8, dual XD linear motors. So focusing speed should be extremely quick and it's extremely precise. So we're out here shooting some soccer with the Sony 600 millimeter f4 lens. Now I shot uh, this game last year with the 400 millimeter lens and I thought that 400 millimeter focal length was a little bit long for shooting inside of a stadium. So this is gonna pose a little bit of a bigger challenge because everything is so much tighter in the frame. However, it could make for some really interesting shots. If you can nail the right composition, you can get some really good compression. You get some really, almost some portrait shots. And uh, it should be really, really challenging, but also pretty fun at the same time. So far, some initial impressions. The autofocus is extremely fast, very responsive, very quick, very precise. And the build quality of this lens is excellent. It's uh, very lightweight, built very similarly to the 400 millimeter f2.8, as I mentioned earlier. So even though I'm on monopod right now, you can easily handhold this lens uh, for short periods of time. It is a 600 millimeter full frame lens, so it's gonna get heavy after a while. But for short bursts, if some action is happening um, and I wanna move around more quickly, uh, you can easily take it off the tripod or the monopod and easily uh, handhold the lens and um, shoot very comfortably. As you can see, I mentioned that I'm, I'm hand holding this lens. It is extremely lightweight and very, very usable in the field handheld. All right. Let's try handheld. And go. Okay, I'm putting it down. But I do prefer being handheld. Makes it much easier to get these kind of shots. As you can see on the side here, all the buttons and dials and rings and switches are all mirrored basically from the 402.8. So if you're a photographer that's going back and forth between these lenses, um, everything should operate and feel very comfortable and very familiar. Man, 600 millimeters is very, very long for shooting soccer. It's really, really tough to get any kind of close-up action. Uh, like the, compo the uh, composition is very, very, very tight uh, on this kind of field. Like I'm almost at the end of the field and shooting across half line, like I'm getting almost just barely getting like full body shots of the players. So it's really, really tough to get full size shot of the player and the ball in some of these shots. It's just very, very tricky. And I'm not a professional uh, sports photographer by any means, so it's an extra challenge for me. So, it might be kind of tough sometimes to get uh, some action shots if you're not like a really experienced sports photographer, but uh, you can get some really, really nice uh, close-up shots. So the 200 to 600, this is something altogether very unique. This is something that's not currently offered by any other camera manufacturer right now. This is the first 200 to 600 millimeter native full-frame mirrorless lens. One really interesting fact about this lens is that it's an internally zooming lens. So when you uh, rotate the zoom ring from 200 to 600 millimeters, the lens does not extend outwards. I and mean, that's really nice for helping keep the lens really balanced and really small. Just really impressive uh, design element there. All right, so switching over to the 200 to 600, one of the first benefits uh, that you immediately recognize is just how much smaller and lighter this lens is. Um, it's way easy to handhold. The zoom is very versatile, um, but the build quality feels just as robust as a 600. Um, but one of the downsides is that it's a variable aperture at f5.6 to 6.3. So here as the sun sets, uh, even though we're shooting in a really nicely lit, lit uh, stadium, uh, I immediately notice that the dimmer apertures are really making the ISO climb on this camera. Um, I'm shooting at like 1 1,000th, 1 1,250th of a second just to stop that action and I really notice a big jump in ISO. Um, so that's something to take into consideration. The f4 of the 600 uh, was nice and bright enough to get low ISOs uh, here at Red Bull Stadium, but um, it's just something to keep in mind if you're planning on shooting anything in low light. Um, the f5.6 to 6.3 is a, um, a challenge. 
Uh, one of the big things about the 200 to 600, obviously, is the ability to zoom. And as I mentioned earlier, with the 600 Prime, it's really, really hard to shoot uh, soccer for me anyway, for me personally, um, just because it's so tight, so telephoto. Um, but obviously, with the ability to zoom out to 200, you have all that flexibility, all that versatility, and it really makes it easier to frame, uh, particularly soccer in this case, um, makes it much more easy to uh, frame up your shots. Obviously, these are more photo-oriented lenses. It was worth actually using the 200 to 600 in some video. Uh, I shot intermittently throughout the uh, soccer game yesterday, and uh, the reason I did this is because when we spoke to Sony, they didn't want it to, to me to just think of it as a photo lens. It does have video capability, and what I mean by that is, is the way they've designed this is we've mentioned it as a nice for balance sort of thing, that everything is housed inside of one continuous cylinder. It doesn't move, it doesn't change its size when you change focus or change focal distance, but that also means that this lens is good for cinema applications. Think of it like you could put a matte box on this, something you, wouldn't, you can't do with lenses that change their length when you change their focus distance. And now, it's not par focal, that is to say I can't rack focus in at 600 and pull out and expect it to keep the focus distance uh, set. But because Sony's autofocus system is so reliable, if I focus on something in the distance at, at 600 and I hit tracking and I set it on there, which by the way is on these A9s, the new tracking feature, uh, I can back all the way out to 200 and keep following that subject. And there's no noticeable difference that I have Change, there's no focus change. Like uh, that person will stay in focus the whole time, even if I'm backing in and out of 200 to 600. The fact that these lenses have so much built into them, and the bodies for that matter, to make tracking and following and focusing easier, uh, the fact that it doesn't change its weight and all that sort of stuff, and the fact that if I wanted to put a matte box in, I could. Sony has done their part to make using this lens for video easier, even if it's going to be challenging no matter what to be shooting at these types of focal lengths. Before I get into what we're shooting today, I want to do some uh, wrap-up thoughts on shooting sports with the new Sony 600 and 200 to 600 millimeter lenses. First initial thoughts is that the performance on both these lenses are fantastic. Um, despite the 200 to 600 being significantly less expensive, um, I found that the autofocus performance was just as responsive and fast and precise as the 600 f4. The only downsides, like as I mentioned, was the uh, dimmer variable aperture in the 200 600 a bit more of a struggle to shoot in low light environments but today we are outside we are going to shoot some wildlife um, which is one of the best uh, subjects for the 200 to 600 millimeter lens we're going to try the bare lens by themselves if we can get our hands on some teleconverters we're also going to uh, test those out a bit one of the interesting things about using the teleconverters on the 200 to 600 millimeter lens is that even though the apertures are f5 6 to 6.3 um, the mirrorless cameras don't have the f8 autofocus uh, restrictions that most DSLRs have. So put a 1.4 or a two point teleconverter on these things and you'll still have autofocus performance and even more versatility and more reach. It's pretty cool. All right, so I was able to find a 2x teleconverter and even with the, uh, the widest aperture you get is f11 um, at 200 or f13 uh, at uh, 600 millimeters. So even with a 2x teleconverter on here and a very narrow aperture of f11, at 200 or f13 at uh, 600 millimeters, um, I don't notice any difference in autofocus performance. It feels just as snappy, just as responsive, and tracking, a, uh, tracking AF performance works great. So that wraps up our shooting experience for this weekend. Uh, we've only had the lenses for a couple of days, so it's a very early initial uh, impressions on these lenses. Um, but in the hand, uh, as I mentioned, both lenses have fantastic build quality. The 200 to 600 in particular is extremely versatile. It's great for sports, wildlife, anything outdoors in the daytime. Um, the 600 f4, much like the 400 f2.8, is impressively lightweight despite the long focal length, and it's, it's e easy to use handheld, which is just extremely impressive. So in order to finish our initial impressions on these lenses, we need to take a look at image quality. So we will jump back to the lab and see how they look. Okay, let's jump over to Lightroom and check out a few photos from each lens. 
All these photos are raw files without any sharpening or noise reduction processing added. It's just the default Lightroom processing. Now let's start with some sample shots from the 600mm f4 lens. Uh, the image quality here is outstanding and I should expect nothing less from a lens that is $13,000. Sharpness as you can see here is excellent. Uh, even at somewhat higher ISOs, this is an ISO 1000 image. Uh, if you zoom in here you can see hair texture, beads of sweat, you can even see fabric texture on the player's jersey. Let's do another example here. Just overall excellent, excellent sharpness. Lots and lots of fine detail. Just wonderful. Also you'll notice that the bokeh uh, from this lens is super creamy, super smooth. There's great subject isolation thanks to the 600 millimeter focal length. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it's a little challenging to shoot soccer with such a long lens, but when you nail it, the results are fantastic. Uh, it's a similar story here with uh, wildlife shots. Uh, lots of sharp texture and bird feathers. And even on this bright backlit uh, image, I'm not seeing any evidence of chromatic aberration and uh, no vignetting either. Uh, just a really outstanding optical results. Now with the 200 to 600 millimeter lens, it is a similar story. Uh, overall excellent sharpness. But as I mentioned earlier, shooting soccer, for example, uh, the ISO really had to climb. This is ISO 6400, so as you zoom in, you see lots of noise, but uh, the detail uh, is still fantastic. Let's do another example here. As you zoom in, you can see lots and lots of detail still, despite the noise, but great subject isolation, even with the narrow aperture, overall great detail and great autofocus performance. I was also able to try out a 2x teleconverter with the 200 to 600 millimeter lens. Uh, this shot here, for example, is uh, 866 millimeters, and even with the two times teleconverter, the sharpness is wonderful. It might be a little soft compared to the lens by itself, but uh, with some careful raw processing, you can really sharpen this image up quite nicely. Um, I mentioned the shot was taken at f13. So as you notice over here in this corner, uh, be careful with dust on the sensor because the narrower the aperture, the more easily dust and other artifacts will show up. Also, as you can see, I do notice a little more vignetting um, up in the corners than I did with the lens by itself, but that's something that could be easily corrected for in post-processing. Here's another example of a closer subject. Again, F13, uh, 742 millimeters. Um, you'll notice a little bit of vignetting again the dust spots, but if you zoom in, the detail is wonderful. Um, really crisp. Autofocus again was really, really fast. Uh, this uh, bird was swimming by rather slowly still, but um, autofocus tracked it perfectly. So overall, I mentioned autofocus with the teleconverter was great, but both, lens, both lenses did a fantastic job with autofocus performance. I didn't have any issues with either lens. Um, again, this testing was very limited, only had a few days with either lens, but whether it was soccer or birds in flight, uh, both lenses, especially the 600mm f4, did an outstanding job with uh, tracking fast-paced subjects very quickly and very accurately. And as I mentioned, the 2x teleconverter on the 200 to 600, um, I was actually really amazed with how well the autofocus performance was. Normally, uh, 2x teleconverters or teleconverters in general, uh, you'll notice some performance hit with autofocus, but not with the Sony 600 millimeter or the 200 to 600. Uh, autofocus was super fast and I didn't notice any problems. Again, limited testing, but so far my initial impressions are very, very positive. So that's just a quick look. We can't wait to get our hands on these lenses for further testing, uh, but so far the image quality results from both of these lenses are extremely impressive. So after introducing the 200 to 600 and the 600 f4, Sony has rounded out their super telephoto range. They have the 400 and the 600 primes, and the 100 to 400 and the 200 to 600 millimeter lenses. Both of these new lenses will be available in August, and the 600 millimeter f4 will have an estimated retail price of $13,000, whereas the 200 to 600 will have a price of just $2,000. Thanks so much for watching. For more information on these lenses, check out imagingresource.com or hit the link in the description below. And uh, it should be really, really challenging, but also pretty fun at the same time. What's up? I'm doing a video. <laughs> it wasn't aware. Huh? I wasn't aware. Nah, uh, no problem. Should I get out of the way? Kinda, yeah. Jaren's filming me over there. So, another problem.
Uh, let's see, what else is I talking about? 